Hey everybody, welcome to the episode two commentary, Attack of the Clones. I am Dave Cotting. I'm here with Hannah Burr. Good evening, Hannah. Good evening, and how are you? You are all snuggled in your couch here. I got here. my blanket, I got my sweatshirt, <laughs> I got my cup of coffee, coffee I'm ready yeah. to go. Yeah, I got my Diet Coke here, and uh, yeah, here we are doing episode two. You know, we said we are going to do this every month throughout this year so if you haven't seen it already go check out our episode one commentary brand new commentary we did last month yes a lot of deep dive conversation which we'll do as well for episode two mm -hmm. and we aren't going to waste any time because it is you know we we do have already have uh one of our patrons on here darth snm is here chatting with us so hey darth. Here we go. ready all right three two one click right Three, two, one, play. Okay. 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 And you're, are you doing Disney Plus? Yes. Okay, Disney Plus. Okay, here we go. Okay. Three, two, one, play. And 20th century coming yep. up. Okay. All right. No, so man. here we go. All right. Episode two. You might have to, Hannah, just. Turn your down just a tad because I can hear Mine, a little bit. Mine's yeah. a little too loud. Oh yeah, go yeah, just just in case because sometimes they uh, sometimes they like uh, you know they might knock me on YouTube for using the audio too much. But anyway, okay, is that better? Sure. Okay. Here we go. All right, so episode two commentary. This came out. 2002 May of 2002 mm -hmm. so what that make you Hannah like 12 <laughs> were, you, were, were you 12 yet 9 were you really I thought you were 9 for episode 1 no no I was 6 for episode 1 I was 6 for episode 1 I was born one. in wow. 93 wow do Baby. you realize <laughs> here's, the, here's the funny thing do you realize I had already been working for post time for a year. No. When this came out. Yeah, I started working at post time in 2001. <laughs> so I, I always have to tell a story when I do this commentary. But at this point, because it wasn't for episode one, at this point, episode two, the movie theater, you, you, you live in Lexington, obviously. So the yeah. movie theater in Hamburg, the, the Regal Cinemas there, yeah. that was brand new. Like it just got built. Oh, okay. In like 2000 or 2001. And a friend of mine who was an actor buddy of mine was working as a manager. Okay. So we did not, unlike episode one, we did not have to wait in line for tickets for this one. What? We actually showed up about two hours before midnight and he let us come in the back and we sat in the middle of the theater ready for, for episode two. Uh, right, right, right before anybody even walked in. It was crazy. I was, th it was like 10 of us in there. It was so fun. You want to talk about having connections. Yes, right? I mean, huge. And we did, and we did the same three years later for episode three. Mm -hmm. But that's for the episode three commentary. Okay, yeah. so here we go. When did you, when did you, I saw it at midnight opening. When did you see it? Do you remember? I, I think I saw it right after I saw Phantom Menace when I was old enough to see it, which oh, was gotcha. right before I saw Revenge of the Sith because I'm trying to remember the first time I went to Star Wars weekend and it was before Revenge of the Sith came out, um, which Revenge of the Sith will always have a special place in my heart for a mm -hmm. lot of reasons. Uh, so, in anticip uh, so I, I saw the original trilogy Went to Star Wars weekend in Disney when that was a thing. And then in anticipation for Revenge of the Sith, I saw Phantom Menace and then Attack of the Clones. And then for Revenge of the Sith, my dad actually took me out of school early so I could see it. Because that uh, was when yeah. they didn't necessarily premiere at midnight. They premiered earlier that Thursday. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So he took me out of school early so I could see it. Right. Okay. So. So um, when. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. 
No, that that's all I got to say on that. Okay, Darth said he saw it in the theaters. Not sure exactly when. I actually really like this movie. The most Jedi. Enough said. Absolutely. Yes. We will definitely get there when we start seeing it. Because I was in the same boat, you know. I, I'm big, obviously, on the Jedi, too. And, you know, episode one, I was just floored when we finally got the Coruscant, saw the Jedi Temple. But we never saw Jedi in action yet. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing the trailer for this thinking, oh, my gosh, that arena with Jedi in it. I'm like, I am so in this. I was so pumped for this movie. And and just shots like this, too, where, where mm-hmm. you got Yoda talking to the Count Yoda and Kyoto Mundi, Plo Koon, Kit Fisto, uh, Luminari. And you got, I mean, you got these guys, Mace, talking. This Just that shot alone, it's like we just never seen the workings of the government like this, right? This is the first time we've seen a working republic. Now, of course, there's tor- tor- turmoil going on with a possible possibility of war and the separatists and all that stuff. But I mean, and there's that was the first shot that we really get, truly got of CGI Yoda. Yeah. And I don't know, just just stuff like this. I was I remember just sitting there like, wow, this is I am. This is crazy Star Wars. Like we haven't seen Star Wars like this before, you know. Hmm. Um, you know, not not with war going on, and you know, it's just like it's it's really cool, the background there. It absolutely is. It's uh, Jedi on steroids, which is so yes. weird to see, especially if you've seen the original trilogy first. It's just kind of mind blowing when you see all of this. Right, right. So w- I was curious because I remember when this trailer came out, and the title was revealed. Attack of the Clones, and it was not well received. Like, yeah, it was like, what is is this like a a B movie? You know, like what what's what did what do you think of this title, Attack of the Clones? Um, for me, I don't know. For, like, I always got Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones confused, and I think it was because when I saw it, I didn't fully understand the whole clone aspect. Right. Like yeah. as a kid, as an adult, it's pretty easy to understand. But as a kid, you're kind of thinking, what is all of this? And shoot, when did the um, the cloning of the, the lamb happen? Oh. Molly the she- Is it Molly uh, the Sheep? I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to. That wasn't around it. this time, was it? No, I I, it, was. it was either around this time or it was either around this time or it was after this time. I think it was yeah, a little remember. after this time. So the whole idea of cloning, like just for a kid, made no sense to me. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it didn't make sense. So the title was very confusing. That's right. how it was for me, at least when it first came out. Hang on, what? I'm sorry. I'm going to quickly Google this. That's fine. I think the um, the title for me, I was I was fine with it. The only the only thing that I was really a little questioned about it when I first heard it was, you know, as far as we know from, you know, the Clone Wars. Like we we all at this point, all we have seen is is Clone Wars. Is is heard about it, right? We've never seen it. The show, the TV show, obviously didn't come out yet. You know, you you got you got Obi Wan's explanation of, you know, I fought in the Clone Wars with your. Father. So we really didn't know exactly what the Clone Wars meant. Did it mean at right. least I I had, in two thousand two I was questioning like does it mean that clones were fighting clones, or all the good guys were fighting bad guy clones? Because because when I heard Attack of the Clones, I thought okay oh so the clones are the bad guys, like they're attacking, and the Jedi. And the Republic are trying to stop the clones from taking over. Because, you know, when you're watching this for the first time, you you know, you know, obviously we know, we know who Palpatine is and what he's going to become. So we know he's the bad guy in all this, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But how, it was, it was a curious thing watching this. Like, how do the clones actually play into the story? Yes. Because, you know what I mean? Like, have they been around this whole time? And they're all of a sudden become there's a war, or what does it even mean? Like the clones, the attack of the clones, and 
So my thought process the whole time was like, wow, uh, this is going to be this is going to be the clones trying to take over the go- the government or something like that. So so I, it, it was really interesting to me. I was, you know, discovering all this as Obi-Wan was discovering all this in this movie, which again, I thought it was really good. Which is really interesting especially from your perspective, but as a kids from a kids perspective, you're not thinking any of that. Like it, it, you're not thinking, oh, this must be this, and this must be this, and this must be this, because I remember the line where he's like, "Oh, I fought with your father in the Clone Wars," but I didn't really think, "Oh, this is the Clone Wars." Like that never really crossed my mind oh. until I got older. And then okay. when the clones came out, I'm like, oh, Attack of the Clones. Oh, they're clones? Okay. Also, it was Dolly the Sheep, not Molly the Sheep. Dolly the Sheep. Dolly the Sheep. In okay. 1996. Oh, so that was way before this. So before this. this yeah. But still, as a kid, you know, that's a lot to try to consider. And that's mm-hmm. a lot. Like, it. so, I mean, I think one of the reasons why Attack of the Clones was one of my least favorite movies, especially growing up. It was either that and The Phantom Menace. It's just, I think this movie was confusing for me as a kid, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, totally. No, because I think th- there's a lot. If you really look back at this and really watch it, there's a lot of dialogue in this movie. There is. And there's a I ton think, of explanation. And I think that in The Phantom Menace, there's also a lot of political stuff happening as well. Yes. And as a kid, that stuff isn't exciting. That stuff is boring. Like, it it just is. Because you're a kid. It's Star Wars. You want to see Jedi fight. You remember the fights that happened between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. So that you want to see more of that. Yes. And so I think, like, for me, in Attack of the Clones and, like, also in The Phantom Menace, I always fast-forwarded it until you got to the main fight of the movie. So mm-hmm. for Attack of the Clones, mm-hmm. I always mm-hmm. fast-forwarded it to that arena scene. To the arena scene, yeah. For yeah. Phantom Menace, I always went to Duel of the Fates. Duel of the Fates, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, Darth says, uh, yeah, but, this is exactly what I was thought at the time what Dave was thinking the movie might be back about back then mm-hmm. about that's when you're talking I'm, I'm about assuming the, the clone wars. wars about the clone yeah, wars. That's yeah. what you're talking okay. about. Yeah. 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 I, I, I didn't know. I, 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 I remember going into it thinking, okay, this is going to be, I guess the setup of the clone wars, I guess that's pretty much where I think it's going to go, but I didn't know. I didn't know how much further in time still that we were going to take to get to the clone wars, you know? Right. So, so it, it was a mystery. I mean, you know, it's, it's interesting thinking back and watching it now. And the funny thing too, Hannah, I forgot to say it. Um, I work, I worked at home today and like in the afternoon I was like, oh, I'll just see what's on TV and just have it in the background. Well, episode two was on TNT today. Oh, my so word. I had it on the background while I was working anyway. So I, this is the second time I'm watching this thing today. That is but, funny. But uh, but see, I love. Sh- I, just side note, like I love the opening of this movie because I love Coruscant and I love. This is the first time we kind of see a really good nighttime, and obviously the chase coming up. But but anyway, um, yeah, I think the the whole a clones thing kind of threw me whenever I just remember seeing it because, you know, it's the discovery of the clones in this movie that we find mm-hmm. out, and then, you know, you're kind of it's kind of it kind of just slams up into you once the war actually starts and i remember walking out at the end we'll get there it's like wait a minute they're going off to war and the movie's ending you know what the heck (laughs) you know so but you know i do have to mention too that i mean everybody should know this already but this is this takes place we're talking about chronological order this takes place 10 years after episode one yeah so so Anakin is 19 years old in this. Padme's 24 years old now. So they're, you know, we kind of talked about in episode one how we felt about the age difference of the the nine to tw- the 14, you know? And yeah. now we're 24 to 19, which kind of makes more sense. It does. Um, it's not 
as weird anymore. <laughs> right, right. And, and of course, I think, Padme has, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say this because actually my husband and I were talking about this earlier today. Where, like, it's, it's understandable why it kind of needs to be Anakin pushing for the relationship instead of Padme. Uh, because otherwise it feels a little, like, it just feels weird that an older woman's going oh. after a younger man, especially how close he is after the True. age of 18. Like, it just feels yeah. weird. But the story would be way more interesting if, um, if Anakin was saying, no, yes, I'm attracted to you, but no, I can't do this. These are my, these are my rules. These are my boundaries. And she was pushing for the relationship. Yeah, that, that probably would have came off wrong. Yeah, like it comes off wrong, but that's the way more interesting story. Oh, you wanted that. I, I think that's more interesting. So part of me wishes when they first met, Anakin was a little older. Yeah, Maybe oh, totally. Maybe a little, yeah. little more of an angsty teen. Yeah. So then later on, you can have that story where Padme's trying to pursue the... And so it's like that temptation for Anakin versus yes. Anakin just saying, ah, why not? Because that's yeah. like that's expected of a nineteen-year-old. Sorry, right. sorry, gentlemen out there, but like, if you look mm -hmm. at it biologically, that's interesting. Yeah, that's just yeah. that's a natural thing. Of course, yeah. a teenager is going to want that. Why not make it more interesting? Where Anakin's trying to not be tempted so much. But that that is interesting because. It is it is quite the perspective there because with Anakin right now with, when he's pursuing Padme, you know, he is the one basically breaking the Jedi code. Yeah. Because he is pursuing these feelings he's had for 10 years. And to me that is that's what obviously drives the conflict, right, inside of him. And what ultimately becomes his downfall in the next movie. But that's interesting because if Padme then is the one, if you do, if you flip that and Padme is the one pursuing him, then it's, 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 it, to me, it's almost, it almost, how do you say it? It's, uh, it's almost ref very poorly reflected on her because she's now try enticing him to break the code. Like if he didn't want to, and he's like, 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 but that, but that's, but that's filmmaking, right? That's storytelling. That is that major conflict that introduces more conflict in a sense. Exactly. Because, because she's doing something she shouldn't be doing, but then, and, and trying to get him to not do something he should be doing. So it's like, I mean, that's, that's interesting. That actually is interesting, but, you know, and I, and I, and I agree with you. I think I still, I, I still go back and think that I, I do think it would have been a better dynamic if he was older or the same age. Or even you know. like just a couple years younger. Well, that's what I mean. Like maybe a year or two. Like, like, like he was 15 and she was 14 when they met. Or, or if he she, was, even if she he was, was 13, 13 and he, and if he was 13 and she was 14. Yeah. yeah like, cause yeah. like, <sighs> Yeah, yeah, Darth. Uh, Anakin's got skills, both lightsaber and driving skills. Right. Um, I, it's just I don't. I, that that's one part of their relationship that never made sense because to me it felt like it wasn't love from Anakin; it was obsession. Oh wait, that, that's what you think it was? It is. Well, like obsession? that's how I read it. I'm like. Oh. So, yeah, she was your crush when you were a kid. Okay, I get that. But you've been thinking about her for how many years? And now you actually, like, want to... Pers like, it just... It's always sad, weird for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I would almost prefer not knowing about their first... The first time they met. And, like, have the relationship they have in the Clone Wars. Cause that's great, I think. True, yeah, 
It's yeah. just like, I don't know, it always it always is weird for me. And that's kind of a personal thing, but... Uh, uh, it would have been a little easier to watch. Maybe not so, Maybe not so awkward. awkward. Yeah, yeah, true. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because I... Here's the thing, too, is... I, th- I think it's unfortunate, even though they didn't think about this back then when they made this, but because because there is a big gap, 10-year gap. This is the first time, right, because this is the fifth movie that came out. This is the first time we had this much of a gap between movies, right? Yes. Episode four to five was three years from uh, as far as, like, timeline. Four to five was three years. Five to six was one year. And now you have episode one and two, 10 years. So it's a pretty big jump um, that we've never had before. And so when I, when you think about it, he says, you know, Anakin says, I haven't seen her in 10 years, master. That line alone right there boxes you in, which means you cannot have any stories in that 10 years where they've seen each other. Mm-hmm. Which is unfortunate because now that we're getting all these novels that are kind of filling in the gaps, it would have made sense then to actually start having stories to where they are crossing paths. And then it makes this more real that he does have feelings for her. He's had feelings for her every time because he's seen her. He's seen her as he's grown up. He's seen her mature. He's seen her develop from a queen and then help in the Senate. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would have made more sense. It um, really would have. And it also right? would have shown Padme having more of a connection with him as well because. Yes. Like that always felt weird. It, it As well, that all of a sudden she has an attraction toward this young man. Right. That she hasn't seen in 10 years. And even in the books, she only saw him as a little kid on Naboo. Or, sorry, a little kid on Tatooine. Mm hmm. Just as a little boy. Like, in the books, it's very clear she's like, oh, yeah, and then there was this little boy, da 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 Yeah. To me, it would have made more sense if Padme, growing up, had a crush on Obi-Wan. <laughs> it just well, he's like... Space Jesus. I think, he, I think he's, like, double his age, her age, though. In I know, one. I know. But, like, that makes... Speaking from a girl's perspective, as a teenager, that just makes sense. That you're right. You're right. You're right. That just makes so much more sense. Also, I love the fact that people will make a joke that Ewan McGregor as Obi Wan looks like Space Jesus, and people will actually have pictures of him, and they're like, "It's a picture of Jesus." Like people will say, (laughs) "I saw, I see this picture of Obi Wan in my grandmother's house." And I'm like, why do you have a picture of Obi-Wan? And she goes, no, it's not Obi-Wan, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that a lot. That is pretty good. I will say this, though. Across the board, and I know we talked about the, about this on Inside the Force, and I'll just say it again. The Star Wars Skywalker saga, in my opinion, is per- perfectly cast. There's not one casting yes. choice that's been made that makes me go, why did you do this? And I think True. I I never, I didn't know that Hayden Christensen got so much hate for being Anakin until I was older. I thought Lots when I saw this movie for the first time, I thought he was the perfect Anakin. Yeah. Like, I thought he fit the part perfectly. I thought he acted it perfectly. I thought he was a brilliant actor. I had a little crush on him. I mean, I thought he was fantastic. So it just kind of blows my mind why he receives so much hate. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I get it, Darth. His hair is not the best in this movie, but what Padawan's hair is really good. Like, come on, the braid is kind of hair. pathetic. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, the braid I never understood, but that's okay. Yeah. Oh, he said oh, she, he meant Obi Wan. What? Yeah, yeah. I think his hair is gorgeous. Nah, he's got. I, I'm not a big fan of his hair either, what? to be honest. No, I love his. I mean, hair. it's the it's the it's the mullet look. You know, I'm just not really a big fan of the mullet look. Does he have a mullet look? Yes, he's got Obi Wan. I mean, yeah, he's got hair just up top, and then it's like. 
that's way not near the bottom. Well, that's not. Like it's, a not well it's not full. It's not. It's not full. <laughs> he needs a leather vest. Yes, he does. It's not <laughs> a mullet. I would. I do not call that a mullet. That's not a it, mullet. It's kind of mullishy. Mullet, a little bit mullishy, but it's not full mullet. No. It. Oh, okay. I. I. It's this wavy long hair. To, I get it. Agree to I disagree. I view it yeah. as like this gorgeous wavy hair that is just quaffed perfectly. Yeah. I, I don't know. I. I was. A, I wasn't that big a fan of it, of it either. But. Um, but back to Hayden. I think you're right. Uh, proves that there's hairspray. Yes, there is hairspray. Or he's constantly <laughs> using the force to keep it in place. <laughs> yeah. You know, back to Anakin. I think he. You're right, Hayden. I think was. You know, he was he was a newcomer. Yes. Uh, and I don't know if you know. Do you know the two the two people that he beat out for this I role? I do. Okay, so. I might have to be verified for this, but th- I, I remember the the two that were up for it. One was Leonardo DiCaprio, and the other was Ryan Phillippe. Do you remember? You know who Ryan Phillippe is? The name sounds familiar. He was in that movie, um, "Cruel Cruel Intentions," with uh, okay. Sarah Michelle Gellar and. Uh, See, I'm not mad about Selma that. Blair. I like. Would Leo? I think the thing is, each of them would have done a different Anakin. Well, absolutely, and and of course, George was known for mostly hiring knowns, right? He wanted yeah. people to be bro- to have their breakouts, which is great. I absolutely love that. Sure, and I got to think, you know, if you think about it, Leo had come off a of Titanic. And so he was higher priced, mm. but I just, but I definitely don't see him as Anakin. I, de- I mean, just knowing what I know of Anakin, Leo now, I just, I would not have no. seen him like that. Now, no. Ryan Phillippe, I actually could have seen that. I actually could have seen that. I could see each of them doing an Anakin, but I don't think it would have played as well. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I mean. No, and by far, by far, the choice that George keeps saying is that. Hayden had the best chemistry with Natalie Portman in the reads. So, and that's the thing George doesn't get a lot of credit for. I don't think he doesn't get enough credit for how he screen tests these people together. Yeah. It's not like he casts, 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 and then puts them together. He's reading them with different people. You know, that's how he got uh, Mark and Harrison and Carrie together. Like he tried different combinations of, actors mm-hmm. you know burt reynolds was in there i think i think kurt russell yes and then i can't remember the females that were auditioning but it's like you know he had these different combinations and then it was like these three are the ones that get along the best and act the best and same thing with these with hayden you know he brought hayden in to, to act with natalie he brought you uh, went in to work with him and then it's like oh he's he's just works with them better it's more natural than anything so yeah he doesn't get enough credit for that. I think it was, no. it was it's great casting. He does not. And cuz like and here's the sad thing though. The parts of this movie that I like the least are the Padme and Anakin parts. Yeah, but I think, you know, <laughs> like I hate to say it and I know it's so important. But you got to you got to have you, you and I, I totally get it, but you, you know, in the in the story part of this, as as we get to episode three, you have to show the, their relationship. Oh, I you know, know that I mean? there was actually somebody who decided to redo the story of episodes one, two, and three, like completely redo them. And um, this guy said, like, oh, you should focus on Obi Wan. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And in that version, you don't really have a spotlight on Anakin and Padme's relationship. It's kind of more in the background, and you actually, in his version of the story, you don't find out that Anakin and Padme get married until Obi Wan does in Revenge of the Sith, when during their fight with oh. 
uh, Count Dooku in the beginning. Count Dooku's like, think about your wife, Anakin. And Obi-Wan's like, your what? <laughs> and that's well, when everyone yeah, but, realizes, okay. oh. Yeah, yeah. But I think we've come to the, I think we've, well, I don't know. Does does Anakin or does Obi-Wan ever really know that they got married? I don't know if I, he ever knows. I don't know if they got, I, the, I don't think he ever knows that they got married, but I do think it's he never, knows that they're together, though. It's never explicitly said that he knows they're together, but it's heavily. Yeah, I think I think he I think he definitely. I mean, it's he's crazy if he doesn't. I mean, he wouldn't know who Anakin is if he didn't think that he was highly in love with Padme. You know, there are so many moments throughout the Clone War. Yeah, the mushy parts. Yep, yep, Darth. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a sucker for romance, but as a kid, I'm like, I want the mystery. I want what Obi-Wan's doing. I don't want this lovey-dovey <laughs> yeah. crap. True, um, true. That's why I, I've i always said, and I, I have said it on, my, on these other commentaries, but not with you, Hannah. Here's what, here's what I would have done if I had done this movie, because I agree with you. I think that, I think that, even though I do, I don't. I I appreciate what George was trying to do. Was trying yes. to. Oh, there's Rose Byrne, by the way, who is a phenomenal actress. Who we didn't really know who she was in this movie, but she has gone on to do all kinds of stuff. She has. Anyway, um, yeah, I really like Rose Byrne as an actress. Uh, but what I would have done is the relationship between Anakin and Padme. Yes, there's these moments that they're together and hanging out and eating together and rolling around in the, the, on the grass together, whatever. But the one thing I would have done, I would have, I would have put, what, what do you see mostly in, in movies when, when a guy and a girl get together? They're usually get, getting together and, and, and falling in love when there's tragedy or when there's, suspense so what I would have done is while they were out on their own I would have had another bounty hunter tracking them down and yep. and how 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 much more or how quickly could Padme have fallen in love if he's saving her life right because all right. that happens you're I mean you're right I mean what the, the the mushy parts are kind of the boring parts because what are they really doing? They're all they're, they're not doing anything up until he has a dream about his mom, and then he goes and figures that out and gets mad. That's really it. There's yeah. no there's there's never a time where they're stressed. There's never a time where they're in danger, right? They're just imagine if you pull in like a Bosque or an Aura Singh here. You don't even have to do that. What if you have Anakin who's like, hey. I'm taking my job seriously. This is my first big thing on my own. And he's just like hyper overprotective. He's mm -hmm. smacking food out of her mouth because he's scared it's poisoned. He's sitting oh. in the corner watching her. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like all of that. But that's kind of paranoia, though, a little bit. Sure. Right? But he's this is his first thing on his own. And. He doesn't want her to get hurt. And right away, if there was some conflict between the two of them, besides, oh, we can't do this sort of thing. It, right. If it's like, you're babying me. Like, stop. I can take care of myself. No, it's my job to protect. Like, that in and of itself, that conflict will, could help too. So even yeah, just no, the idea totally. that he's supposed to be protecting her. And he's mm -hmm. just taking it to the nth degree because he's like, I got to prove myself. I got to prove myself. So I'm going to be extra, extra careful. And she's like, right. what are you doing? Stop. No. Yeah. 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 No, that's true. I, I, I and, that, and I think, I think all those things could have come up in the course of, you know, a, 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 a fight for your life type scenario you know, where there actually is somebody tracking them down 
and he's got to fight because you know technically he's never really been on his own. He's saying he said it himself. This is the first time I've been on my own. How does he handle being on his own? Does yeah because because you can imagine too also that part alone could lend itself to being having the feelings to introduce you to the dark side, like mm-hmm. fear of losing Padme, the anger that I feel that this guy is beating me or something like that. Right? I mean yeah. You know, because Tuscan Raiders that killed your mom. I mean, I get that. That's that's the loss is what there's no the loss and the anger and the hatred, I guess. I mean, I, that's a way of getting there. But 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 having Padme's life in danger, that's going to get you there even further, I feel like. So. Oh, absolutely. And when we get to this Tuscan Raiders, I'll talk about my feeling about that. Um, but with this right now about him searching the archives and all of that, it. Like, I love the fact that we went on this mystery kind of path here with Obi-Wan. Yeah. Like, this is kind of the first time in Star Wars we see a true mystery and a true detective kind of trying to figure Correct. stuff out. And I kind of wish they did more of this in Star Wars. More of the mystery. Detec- detective, more of the- detective work, yeah. No, I agree. I think I think I, you know, I'm, I'm, we've talked about it numerous times on the show. I feel like, or maybe we haven't. I don't know. Maybe, but it's like I I wouldn't mind. You know, Star Wars, getting into series of, of different genres, like, like thriller based. You know, like detective thriller based. Like that would be a cool story. Well, is it true that? Um Acolyte is supposed to be more suspense, more not thriller. Uh, I have no idea. Who knows? I, 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 I mean, heard a rumor I, that I just know it's on the dark dark side stuff. It could be more thriller based that way. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Which they do because, man, I I still want a buddy cop movie with Poe and Finn. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know you you keep saying that. Yeah, you want a buddy cop movie, but but that would be cool. I think you know get a get a storyline of it. Almost like think about like. I know they couldn't do it this dark, but like seven in Star Wars, like oh, if you do the movie Seven in the Star Wars world, like Oof. then you're talking like detective. What's in and, the box? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's in the box? Like that would I would I would I would totally watch that movie or series or whatever it is. That would be incredible. Oh my god! You know, one thing I, I did have in my notes here, I was I just we're kind of going backwards, but in the very beginning when when Padme was sleeping. Oh god! I was just thinking. I, no, I was just thinking. Like, you know how often, like, traveling through the galaxy and stuff like that. It, I just I don't know why I started thinking about it. Like, I mean, your sleep schedule's got to be way off. Oh, it has to like, be. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it has to be. There's no way. But then again, because if I leave, if I leave this planet during the day and I get to this planet, but it's nighttime, but it's only been a couple hours, I'm like, wait a minute, do I go to bed? Or, I mean, it's got, <laughs> I don't know, because she just got there, and who knows how long she was traveling? I guess Naboo to Coruscant. I don't know how how long that is, but I don't know. That was just a note that I was thinking, like, uh, that, that's got to be weird. Oh, that has to be weird, and I think everybody has way more calf than they need to in order to stay up. <laughs> right, yeah. I do Star- got it. In- Starbucks is a real thing in Star Wars. Starbucks is a real thing. I'm sure there is definitely some yeah. some way. I mean, honestly, you probably take a – in this Star Wars, you could probably take a pill at any time and just go to sleep. Probably. I bet they have that. And I, I also bet that, especially on those spaceships, they have, like, night view for their night, windows true. so that yeah, you yeah, can yeah. just be like, oh, it's night. Oh, look, body. Guess what? It's night. It's time to go to bed. Time to go to bed. Yeah, and I did want to mention, too, because, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm just realizing, too, again, how sharp this movie is because, you know, people may not know this either, maybe, but this is the first star wars movie and one of the first movies period to be shot on digital cameras back in 2000 oh dang so two because in because in because i remember lucas was george was developing uh 
I said, hey, Dar, wait, Dar says, hey, all right, oh, I am watching um, along. Where are y'all at? And I will try to sync up. So they just arrived on Naboo. I uh, actually time's... was there in Spain, by the way, where they filmed yeah, this. Yeah, that's incredible. I was there time in stamp. Spain. Oh, you were, yeah, you were there? Yeah. What? So... Oh, when you went to Spain. Yeah, when I went to Spain, I was there. So cool. Time, time stamp, Darth, right now is 38, 30, well, wait, wait, 38, 56, 50. 59, 39, 39, 01, that's where I'm at. So you should be about 39 minutes in. Um, uh, what was I saying? The um, uh, digital cameras. So yes, digital cameras. Yeah. So George, I remember reading. I remember reading because because I, I was, you know, in the late 90s, I was getting into acting and I was doing all these movies mm -hmm. and and I was. Read, I was trying to read up a lot and learn about equipment and because that was the digital age it was start digital cameras were starting to come out you know dv cam was like the big thing dvc pro so i remember hearing and reading about george working with sony at the time they were developing this camera called the cine alt camera which was the first digital camera now he was trying to get it ready so that he could shoot episode one but it wasn't quite ready yet. Oh, wow. So they, they shot episode one on film still. Because they, they shot that in 97, obviously, two years before the movie came out. Right. So by 2000, when they were ready to shoot this, the Cine Alta was out. And he shot it. And I remember going up to... Uh, uh, no, that was episode... Was that episode? No, that was episode three. Yeah, that was episode three. Uh, when I went to like the celebration, I saw a first like a little cut of the digital cinema. Actually, episode three, I'll say that later, but I'll say that for that commentary. <laughs> uh, but this one, yeah, this one I remember. But the problem was, is even though he shot it on digital, there weren't any digital cinemas yet, so it had to be transferred to film still. So what? when you saw it in the theater, it was still the film reel. Yes. Digital, digital digital theaters didn't start coming didn't happen until mid to late 2000s oh because it was so God. expensive to put it back then to put a digital camera in in your movie theater so so people that were shooting which wasn't that many people like it was him and maybe Cameron Crow or not Cameron Crow but James Cameron um, I think Spielberg started experimenting a little bit with it but you know it's like they they were shooting on digital but there was no way to show it so you had to transfer it to film Oh, so wow. when you watched it in the theaters, you saw the grain a little bit. But, you know, when you're watching it now, it's like it's crystal it's clear. Gorgeous. It's like pristine. Yeah. So, uh, Darth, you took the words out of my mouth. I was about to say the fact that we're now at Camino yes. with Bad Batch. It's like it brings it to a whole new level. It, it just does. It does. Ah! Well, that, well, well I was. It, wait, is that Nala say? Is yeah, that it's Nala say? That is, uh, yeah, that is not, wait. Wait, is that Nala Say? It was well, Nala Say, but that's not who's in Bad Batch right now, right? No, um, Nala Say is the Kami the Kimonian. Oh, that's with Omega? Yeah. That's, that's, um. Or is that not Nala Say? That's Tong Wee. That's Tong Wee. That's not Nala, that's Tong Wee. This is, that's Lama Su, and that's, that's Tong Wee. That's, oh, okay, uh, okay. So it's not Nalase. Yes. That's not Nalase. Okay. Um, I, was about to be, I was about to freak out. But that was a that was a that was one of my notes. Also, which is a good point right now to talk about is, you know, like we talked about, there's not a lot of story mm -hmm. between episodes one and two. You know, we talked about this. Uh, the Padme, there's some Padme books, right? The Queen's Hope, Queen's Peril, Queen's Shadow. Um, yes. But there's not lot that not that much in between. There's not even there's no comics really that really have taken place that much. Obviously, there's a lot between two and three because of the entire seasons of the Clone Wars. But there's not a lot that go into it. so it's there's not a lot of you know we always talk about well how do those other stories impact your perspective of this of these movies now. 
in my perspective, hasn't really that changed as much, except mm-hmm. now we have the Bad Batch. Yes. Which does kind of, like you said, reflect, and like Darth just said, it's like it reflects back on Camino, and you know, knowing that, knowing that eventually this thing gets, this place gets destroyed. I know. It's so heartbreaking. <laughs> yes. Um, also, can we just applaud Obi Wan for thinking on his feet when they're like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, this army's ready for you." I'm like, "Oh, great! I yes. totally knew about this this whole time. Totally knew." And in, I'm sure inside he's like, "What is going on? What did I find?" Uh, and here's our favorite line. I don't like sand. <laughs> yeah. Is this so is this Spain or is this Italy? I don't know where this was filmed. I think this is Italy. This looks like um or maybe it's Spain still. I don't know. No, this looks like Lake Cuomo, which is uh the lake that's actually in between Switzerland and Italy. Uh, that could be I, it. That I could be it. I know there's know. A, the, I can't remember, but there's another movie I've seen that takes place in the same area i don't know if this is where that's filmed though i'm just saying it looks like it but i don't know if that's it i believe i believe i i heard when they were shooting that they were shooting in italy um so maybe this is well well, i i did find that weird that for especially speaking as someone who's like hyper focused on locations for the current project they're working on i find it very weird that they're jumping from country to country in europe even though well, yeah. I know it's very easy to do. Once you're over in Europe, explore Europe as much as you can. But, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I gotta look this up, though. Well, Where did I they also... film the sand scene? I'm just gonna call it the sand scene, because I'm pretty sure the internet will know what I'm talking oh, about. Maybe. Yeah. I, I will say when I was watching this, too, not the first time, but several times after. I remember thinking, well, it's curious that if you're trying to hide, like, why are you going to these gorgeous places? Yeah. Walking around in public. Are you trying to be like, hey. I mean, it's like, it's not like Matt, it's not like uh, Padme doesn't get recognized, especially out on Naboo. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, granted, I don't know if anybody knows they're hiding, but. Yeah. Okay. Spain, Italy, Tanzania, and Sydney. Tunisia. Yeah. Which I think that yeah. was Tatooine, right? Yeah. That's, that's the homestead. That's where the homestead is. Um, and in and, and Australia, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Sydney, Australia was Australia. where the stages, that's where the stages were. It is Lake Como, Italy. Nice. Good job. Thank you. Good call. I pulled that one out. Have you been there? Yes. Oh, that's why wow. I recognized cool. it. Yeah, that's great. It, it is. It, it's, it's gorgeous. So this is where we learn, which has always been yes. a major mystery for me. And to be honest, it's still fully not completely vetted out. I mean, I think it's, I think it's there now. But the whole Sifo-Dyas, yes, you know, situation because that is a brand new name that we heard when you're watching this. Like, oh, Sifo-Dyas ordered these clones, and I remember thinking, like, well, okay, who the heck is Sifo-Dyas? I mean, we kind of get a little bit of the answer as to how it was done under his name by watching Tales of the Jedi. Correct. But so that's we, 25, almost 25 years later. Yeah. <laughs> also, can we talk about how... Okay, two things. First off, it always blew my mind seeing how many clones they made in that short of a time. Like, holy smokes. Well, he, she said, she, he says 200,000 clones ready... A million on the way. Way. And it's like, what? Yeah. In 10 like, years. How confused, like, how Obi Wan is keeping his composure is beyond 
Like as an adult, yes. thinking, like as a kid, you're you don't fully understand it, but as an adult, you're like, oh my gosh, like that's thrown in your face of I have this army suddenly. But then can we also talk about how they have a kiss? Uh, Obi Wan, or sorry, Anakin and Padme, they have a kiss. They're like, we shouldn't do this, and now they're having a romantic picnic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this is the out, in stuff. out in public. You know, it's no big deal. They're not I mean, hiding. Yeah. This is the stuff that didn't make sense to me. That's I, that's I I I agree. I think I, I you know while I'm watching it, of course, I you know like anything, I'm just trying to enjoy the scenery and see how oh, yeah. this is working. But yeah, but after I've watched this thing over and over again, it's like, man, I just wish there was a lot more conflict going on here. You know? I think conflict would have helped. Besides, because the thing is, and, and you know this as a filmmaker as well, must be nice to be a senator. Yeah, seriously, I wish I could just <laughs> go on a go picnic. You want like that, yeah. By Lake Como, are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, I think, I don't like, I know that the, what they were trying to go for was just the internal conflict between the two of them of like, should we fall in love? Should we not? But I think the ride the watermelon flea. Yeah. I don't know who designed those creatures. I feel like that's, uh, that's <laughs> watermelon flea. That is hilarious. That's I love funny. That. I love it. They're that they're officially now known as the watermelon flea. Yeah. Yeah, and then a romantic romp in the field. I mean, yeah. Like I, mean. I, I you're right. And you know this as a filmmaker, whenever there's an internal conflict going on, it's best to make it external as well. There needs to be something going on for your viewer to engage in cuz internal is sometimes very very difficult to portray on the mm -hmm. screen. So, oh, Daniel Logan. It's Mox. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, the sweetie. Little Mox. Then... There he is. It's Mox. And then Tamara yeah, Tom, Tom Morrison. I know, man. I love Tamara Morrison. Oh, I love him so much. He's such a sweetheart in real life, too. Yeah, he is. Like I, Like, I met him. And he was so sweet, so kind. Yeah, Answered he, he all loves, of my and he, questions. And he loves Star Wars. He loves oh, Star Wars. Oh, he does. He loves it. He yeah, spent so, so much time with every single person who came up to him. And he answered every single one of everybody's questions. And even the cast members are like, tomorrow you need to move it along. And he's like, no, 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 I'll just stay later. It's fine. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I... You know, but again, this this is where, this is where you know when you're watching this for the first time back in nineteen or two thousand two, it's like, it's it gets a little confusing because wait a minute, yes, that's that's Boba Fett, that's Boba Fett. Wait, mm -hmm. he's the son of Django. Well, he's not a son. He's the clone of Django. Okay, so this is crazy. Um, like the Fett, but you know. <laughs> You like the Fed. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, I feel like I almost wonder what if Attack of the Clones was two movies? Like, what if you took the time? Because, like, part of me thinks that there's so much thrown at you in this movie and so much new information that it's almost too much all at once. But then when you think, okay, well, what if this was split into two movies? It feels like there's not enough to do that. So I don't know what the balance is. Yeah, Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I think I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like, I, I almost feel like you needed the Clone Wars to help flush all of this out. You needed the clone, like the actual battles? No, like or, you needed the show, the Clone Wars. Oh, to help yeah. No, no, no. Flush no, yeah. out all of this. Because it's, no, it's, I, I, it's a lot. It is a lot. No, it is a lot. I totally agree with that. I think, and I think, you know, the thing about Boba, the Boba Fett thing, it was, if, if you really think about it back then, wait a minute. Boba Fett 
had all of these clones. Like he was basically a clone. Yes. And there were millions of him mm -hmm. around. You know, it's like they trained him to be soldiers, but and fight like, I guess, fight like a bounty hunter in a sense. So, I mean, it's mind blowing to think, could you look back at the, the original trilogy, like, wait a minute, Boba was an original. He was a clone. Like he was, was I mean, that's kind of big. That's really big to wrap your head around. I feel like it is. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm really curious that George went there with that. Like he, he thought of, Django, you know, his father being the being the original blueprint for the clone. I mean, that's just I, that's actually pretty brilliant if you think about it. I mean, it really is. It to absolutely be able to tie is. in the story, to tie in the trilogies together, mm -hmm. and but have I think, those characters related. But I think it makes sense for Boba Fett to never consider consider himself a clone. No. Because like yeah. he was raised, yeah, yeah, like a son. So, right. but it is very interesting to think about, and I'm really glad we're talking over this conversation. That I'm not gonna lie, it's just a little cringy. This what what the scene? The, this scene is cringy, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I keep thinking about the kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I think the worst line one of the if not the worst line in all of Star Wars. Oh man, what is it? Is is honestly is is Hayden's line in this. Right Which here one? When, when he says, I wish that I could just wish away my feelings. Oh yeah. <laughs> I I, I really don't like that line. I'm but sorry. How really much more like interesting line. would this scene be if it's Anakin denying Padme's advances? Well, uh, yeah, I, I think and I then, think that whole aspect of that is different. Uh, different. And then right when here. they're right about, here. To, oh wait, he says, "Wish." I wish that I could oh. just wish away my feelings. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I like, but how much more interesting? Because then he is a Jedi before they go into the arena. He's like, well, I got nothing to lose at this point. I'm in love with you. Yeah. Oh, and he's well, like, yeah. Oh, what? I thought we weren't doing this. And he's like, we're about to die. I don't have my saber. I don't know what's going on. So just in case this <laughs> You yeah. should have never given me. Blah. Blah. What? Wait, you should have never given me. What do you talk? What's that I mean? mean, mean? I will it? say though, the cinematography in that scene was really gorgeous. Like the whole. Darkness. It was. Like, no, the it totally was. was gorgeous. Yes, it is. Cinematography is incredible. This. And I always, I always thought too, like, oh, wait, wait a minute, that's pouring out there. Yeah. And you're gonna stand there and do a message? You can't do the message from inside. inside? Yeah, yeah, that that yeah. also was weird. It's like, yeah, that's weird. well, I'm Look, gonna kind of I'll, get it. Because <laughs> do what? I like it makes sense though because what if they're listening from the inside what if they bug the room you're in well i'm 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 saying get inside your jedi starfighter at least oh and, yeah and do the oh, message yeah, from in one. there <laughs> you know but yeah anyway i i feel like i, I want to make sure our listeners or watchers know that we're definitely not knocking this movie like oh, we, no. it, sounds, it sounds like we hate this movie and like no, no we don't hate this movie I, like but even your favorite movie there are parts about it that you're gonna poke fun of at. course of you course. know yeah in even I mean, movies, look we love star wars it's, it's definitely not perfect but it, no. we definitely but you gotta have see, fun again, with it too you can't ignore the yeah. obvious yeah 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 especially and when you was, got two filmmakers here who <laughs> yeah right 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 I think we're the most cursed when it comes to watching any movie. Yeah. And, well, and, yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm not as harsh as I'm not as harsh as some people I know that are really harsh on movies. Dave, I'm the worst person to go to a movie with. Uh, I am (laughs) the worst. And uh, God bless my husband. He bears it with me. But sometimes he's even worse than me, which is hilarious. (laughs) Because he didn't even study this stuff. But it's rubbed off on him so much. He's like, why? Why did you teach me about this? Because now that's just bugging me. <laughs> that they didn't do True. this. And I'm like, yes. welcome to my welcome to my life. Up oh, here we go. What the dreams? Yep, yeah. the dreams. Yeah. So there was another mention there just now of Sifidius, and so we started getting a yes. little background. Of, you know, Sifidius was a master, and he was. He apparently ordered the clones. You don't really know why. You know, we'd never really find out why. But see, that's the thing too is, I, I wish they would have at least mentioned that there. Which is what we've come to learn from Sifidius was that he had precognition, right? So he could see the yeah. future, like see that more clearly than anybody. That was like mm-hmm. his his main Jedi power. And it would have been nice just to hear that there in that conversation where, you know, Master Sifidius, because right there, you, if the, if Yoda and Mace really sat there and thought about it, and they were like, "Oh wait, he he had precognition and he can see the future. Maybe he saw hurt. something that we don't know, and that's why he did this order behind yeah. our backs because we didn't make this order. The council didn't. So it's like something." He must know something, and unfortunately, he he's not around to tell us anymore. So, but again, just little little things like that, I think, would have added to the explanation of what's going on in this movie. Because because I I question Sifidius even after episode three. I'm like, we never got an explanation of what what happened with Sifidius. Yeah, and like who like what happened to him? No no one's all they said was he was killed. Well, who killed him? Did he get killed because of this? Do they know who killed him? Did he get killed randomly on a mission? I mean, we come to see the Clone Wars, and he actually isn't dead. You know, so it's like he's been held. You know, so anyway, it was. Uh, I just a little. I was surprised that George kind of dro- felt like he dropped the ball on that a little bit. But yeah, I think so too. I feel like he was a throw throwaway Jedi who shouldn't have been a throwaway Jedi. Yeah. There's no toilets. He got the whole patio wet. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> and this was, you know, this is like the only action we get until the end is this fight yep. between Django and Obi-Wan. This and then the only other action is that whole car chase scene. Yes. Towards the beginning of the movie. And then that's it. Before the end. That's right. Yeah. So this is, uh, but this was very cool. I think, you know, this this shows you right away that a bounty hunter can hold his own against a Jedi. Which is kind of terrifying when you think about it. Yes. Like, it's, it's nuts. And think about, and think about again, perspective. Te- we don't know this for sure yet because you might, we find out later about Jango's status as a, quote, Mandalorian. Like, this is a Mandalorian versus a Jedi. Yeah. Which now that we've seen Mandalorian for three seasons and they've, and Clone Wars with all these backgrounds with the Mandalorians. I mean, this means a lot more as far as the history between a Mandalorian. Now, unfortunately, apparently Jango is not considered a Mandalorian. Like, he never right. really pra- practiced it. But he is from, I think he is from Concord Dawn, which is a Mandalorian homeworld. So, yes. um, he just never practiced, you know, the Mandalorian way and all this stuff. Like, right. Like most of those guys did, but yeah. Oh, but he's got the right. armor. Yeah, absolutely. Oof. And Boba was destined to die by malfunctioning or ah, uh, yeah, that is true. Destined. That is true. I still love Obi Wan's line of when he like kicks Django off the edge, and then he realizes he's still tied to him, and he's like, "Oh, not good." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's. But you all, but you, you know, I always, I always questioned like when, 
villains or people didn't have the force and they would fight a Jedi. It's like, how could they even stand a chance? And it's, well, that's, that's it right there. Like you have to be able to get past that. And the thing about it is, is, you know, I always equate, and I think I even heard George say this in an interview before, but you always got to equate that it's exhausting to use the force. Like, it's not something that you just do and you're fine. Like, you can see kind of right there at the end where Obi-Wan's saying that. I mean, he looks exhausted. You know, well, I mean, not you, only is he fighting, but he's also using the force as he's fighting. You even just look at the High Republic at the um, the Great Catastrophe. Right. Yeah. You look at that. Jedi were dying because of how much they were using the force. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's draining. It's It's draining. Absolutely. You almost like you almost literally got to think of it like like the video game like uh like Jedi Fallen Order or something like that. Like you yeah. have they have like a force bar in a sense. And if they use it then there's like they can't really use it anymore. It's, it's like a great mechanic. Yeah, yeah, basically. So so fighting, that's why I love it at the end of this too, at the end well, when we get to it, but like when Yoda or um when uh, Dooku kind of takes out Obi-Wan and Anakin, if you like when he finally cuts Anakin's arm off and pushes him before Yoda comes in, there's a shot where Dooku's like, oh, I mean, he's like exhausted. He exhales. Yeah, he does exhale. So it's, yeah. it's, it's not like they're, they have unlimited force abilities. It's, it's definitely restrictive a little bit. Um, also, I love the fact that Padme is wearing velvet on a desert planet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but here we are now at back at Mos Espa. Yes. Which is You know, this is this is the place where Boba Fett ends up taking over, right? Book of Boba Fett. So again, you know, come around full circle and from the shows to to back to this, you know, you know. But obviously we never we it doesn't it has grown since then. Because we, we, because I remember when they showed a book of Boba Fett, it was a completely different looking area almost. But we don't see a lot of Obmos Espo in these angles here. And yeah. I mean, it's pretty massive city that it has grown into if it hasn't yet. But, you know, we're still years away from Book of Boba Fett at this point. We're still, what are we, 19, 20? We're about 30 years or so. Yeah, we're, we got a so, while. We got a while, but... This was actually one of my favorite scenes. So actually, there was a little more action here, a little bit. Yeah, but um, like if you notice, all the action is happening in the non-Anakin and Padme bits. Yes, very true. Which That's is why I love your idea of how there should have been a bounty hunter going after them. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least, Anakin being paranoid. Because yeah, that, yeah. like, that could help the whole domino effect to him going to the dark side. Yes, agreed. Totally agree. Totally agree. But I love the sound. Like this is where, you know, we already knew Slave One, but the oh, yeah, sound the of this, the sonic. this, yeah, Sonic Charge. Like I remember seeing that in the theater. Like, wow, that is cool. Yeah, that's when I was like, oh, come here, Ali, come here. My dog decided to join me in this viewing now. Yeah, sure. Hey, baby, how you doing, sweetie? But I love the sound that this thing doesn't make and then makes. I mean, it's just incredible. It's so cool. It. So, so cool. Yeah, so Jang, I mean. Um, yeah, like Django is incredible. He's a great bounty hunter. And I know Boba, uh, yeah, Bo uh, Boba learned so much from him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, I'm so glad that he gets more of a story in the Clone Wars, and he has this whole thing where he wants to get revenge by going after Mace Windu, which we're not there yet. The Mah yeah, Dar says I just listened yeah. to two books from Legends that took place during the Clone Wars. Clone Wars Gambit is what they were called. I remember hearing about those. 
They spoke a lot about the toll of using the force. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, which which is why it was really like I can't wait for you to finish Rise of the Red Blade. Um mm -hmm. because in those books she uh, um is cat talks about how the force is actually rejuvenating to her. Oh, right. Like, it feels like it's a song and dance. It's not that draining. And I, I always found that interesting for her because, yeah, in other books and comics, it's pretty obvious how draining using the Force is. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Did you... um? Did you... The connection here, I think, is... I think it was intentional, but maybe it might be intentional, but... So what happens here, right, is is Obi Wan jettisons, you know, spare parts, right? So he can right. simulate a explosion, right? And then he hides on a he hides on a uh, asteroid, so he does not detect it by radar. Yeah, which is exactly what Han Solo does in Return in Empire Strikes Back. He attaches to the Star Destroyer to. And if you remember, right, Boba Fett remembered, ah, oh, wait a minute. I know this trick because of what happened that. here. I think that's pretty neat, right? That's insane. I love that a lot. I know, right? I remember reading about that when this when that happened, like when this movie came out, they were like, well, I, I, th it makes sense how Boba Fett knows Han's move there. Like, there's no way he can just go out of radar. He's got to be attached to the ship. Well, do you think the other reason why Boba was so close to Darth and the Emp and Darth Vader was because his dad was close to the Emperor with regards to the cloning? So, do you think that's how he, or did he her earn his name as a bounty hunter and then it was a happy accident that he ended up freelancing for Vader? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, because Anakin, Anakin slash Darth Vader, I mean, he doesn't... Cut in so true. <laughs> he doesn't uh, actually come across Django, right? He never meets Django. No, because Django dies in this, so... Yeah, no, no, no. Darth never meets Django, but technically the Emperor would have known of Django because the Emperor was behind. No, totally. But so, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, but Vader's the one that's usually he's calling Boba Fett. Um, so Anakin in the Clone Wars, I think he came, he came across Boba a few times, I believe, right? So in the Clone Wars, uh, yes. So he knows who Boba Fett is. Yes. So when he turned, when he becomes Vader, like he knows Boba Fett is what he is, and you know can be that. Yep. So here's a here's another thing about I wanted to hit on about the the dreams that he's having about his mother. Yes. This is another this is another thing that you could have like if even if you didn't do any conflict prior to this. You know, like if you still did what you did, just had these like mushy lo love scenes and stuff like that with Anakin and Padme. I always kind of thought, do you remember? Um, so in episode three, you kind of jump in there, but when he's having visions of Padme dying, mm -hmm. right? He's having visions of her dying in childbirth, and that's what kind of drives him to figure out what to do about saving her. She's not actually, you know, obviously in that situation yet. She's right there by him. Yeah. So I kind of thought after a while, I was thinking back to this and thinking, well, actually, you know, how much more of, of, of a devastation would it have been is if he was seeing these visions of his mom, but when he came here, she was actually okay. And it wasn't until it was because he got there that changed just like the Padme thing that he or, gets there and then she actually gets kidnapped and taken and killed. And 
it, it's because of his actions that really because that's because it is because of his actions that Padme dies, right. right? So I always felt like, well, that maybe that should have been the storyline is that because of these visions, you know, he's seeing what happens if he gets involved, and right. he ha- it has to he has to learn to not get involved, right? Or, or see, I don't know about that. I feel like personally, for me. For him, then, he wouldn't have a need to try to save Padme because he's like, last time I tried to save someone, I actually caused things to get worse. I think this works. I kind of wish that his mom was already dead by the time he got to tattooing. Only Mm. reason being is I'm too late. I did nothing. I've had these dreams for a while. I'm too late. Well, basically, he is too late. Like, yeah. I, I know he is still too late here, but, like, it just adds to that mm-hmm. versus, uh, and that's what would, and that's what fuels him with Padme to be like, I got to be proactive here because last time I was too late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. There. But I definitely I did. I definitely thought, you know, it, because it kind of is playing it's kind of giving him two different types of vision visions uh that he experiences like one yeah like with his mom it's it's happening almost in real time whereas padme it's like more of a future yes. vision you know um but either way i think it's i think i think the the death of his mom, I think, what is ultimately what you know obviously causes him to go down this path. Yes, it absolutely is. If only he had asked for helping, for help saving his mom, perhaps some Jedi healing would have saved her. Oh wow, yeah. Well, yeah. Go on now. Didn't get introduced to force healing, in, yeah. you know, for another twenty-something years. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Allie, please. Allie your is friend, Mr. Turtle. In... We're watching episode two, Allie. Yeah. Yep, Allie Boo. Go go get your friend, Mr. Turtle, okay? <laughs> so then we got the droid. So this is where, obviously, we haven't seen droids yet. We, we saw no, we droids haven't. all through episode one. And I think and me as a kid, I- that. That's what also was confusing because I was like, wait, are the clones the humans or are the clones the droids? Right. Well, yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. And is it, I, I guess, is it, I guess we're going to see clones against droids. I guess, that's kind of what I started thinking Like at this point. I'm like, okay. Yeah. What are we so doing now here? Start, now it's starting to make sense. But it's not really attacking the clones. It's really attacking the droids. Yeah. Like and that was, are, that's, <laughs> as a kid, I was confused. I'm like, wait. Are the clones the droids or the clones? Your Wookiee's name is Allie. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah. My little, That's funny. my little fur baby. Yes, yes, that is definitely a Wookiee. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's. I, let's just say our house is never clean because she sheds like a wildebeest. Oh man, yeah. I'm glad my my dogs don't really shed. <laughs> Your dogs are adorable though. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Count Dooku because, yes, you know, I I was I will say I mean obviously Christopher Lee is a massive actor, big time history of of being an actor. Uh, yeah. Great cast, great person to get. I mean, at this point too, he was doing Lord of the Rings as yes. Saruman. So he was. I mean, just think he was in the two biggest franchises in the he world was. at this point. And, oh, my gosh, he's just an amazing actor. I think... Amazing actor. I don't think he gets enough credit for the work that he does. Yeah, Dar, Dar says, I like the look of the Mune race here more, th- more than I have seen in other artwork. Yes, I agree. Yes. And actually, the Mune, which is crazy to think of, uh, it was actually the, the species of 
at least it's legends, Darth Plagueis. He's immune as far as legends go. We don't know if he's immune in canon yet. Yeah, we don't know but, what canon says, which I, I hope yeah. that um, Acolyte will. Oh. This scene is always so heartbreaking. I'm sorry. It, it is just very is. heartbreaking. It is very heartbreaking. And to me, this is when I go, Anakin is no longer redeemable. 100%. Yeah. Because no, he, he not only kills those attacking him, he kills the women and the children as well. And I yep. don't understand, as a woman, I don't understand how Padme can comfort him after that. Like, I understand the, like, I understand the power mm -hmm. of forgiveness. I understand maybe after a couple of days comforting him, but as an initial reaction and a gut reaction to somebody slaughtering innocent women and children. Right. Like... Like, as I said, yeah, I understand yeah, forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. I understand all of that. But as a gut reaction, not being horrified by that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't come back from that. Like, I mean, it's. I mean, like, he obviously does in Return of the Jedi. But. Well. Yeah, but like, and and you know, I believe in the power of redemption. I believe in the power of forgiveness and all that. But just as like a gut reaction, your media gut reaction isn't to be horrified by that, and not mm -hmm. to be like, dude, what? That's true. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Her immediate reaction is, "I love you," which is powerful and I think is really cool. But at the same time, I'm like. Not a single cell in your body is like, this is wrong. Yeah. Not a single cell in your body, like, because, and and you know this being married, you're supposed to hold each other accountable for their actions. Right. Like you're not gonna hold them accountable to that. You're just gonna let that one slide by. Right. Oh. Yeah, that's... You actually hear Qui Gon's voice right there. I know it's just it's so heartbreaking that whole yeah, bit. Yeah, it's very it's very hurts. it's very tough to swallow there. Yeah. Um, Ali, you can come back up here. Come on. Stop I was thinking, uh, yeah, following. I was thinking Count Dooku. That is one thing about, you know, well, that is one person that we've gotten a lot of content from now that has changed. Yes. The view of Count Dooku since these movies came out because. All we know of him is the evil Count Dooku, the Dooku that was, you know, recruited by Padme or by Palpatine as yep. his next apprentice. We have come to know that he was the one that obviously recruited Django. He's because he's Darth Tyrannus. Mm -hmm. But you know that is, those are th those are stories that are really good out there. You know, Dooku uh, Jedi lost. I love the, the audio drama, the Dooku yes. audio drama. Absolutely. Tales of the Jedi. Yeah. Shed some d new light on Count Dooku. Yeah, I mean, he has an incredible, incredible, I think, what was the other one? Um, was it Master and Apprentice? Master and Apprentice. We got some Apprentice. stories with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so there, there's a lot there of, of Dooku's history now that, that change your perspective of of this and he's of course he's one of the lost 20 one of the 20 that walked away from the jedi that left the jedi order mm -hmm. and um and we know why i mean in, in this movie obviously he's trying to come off as just somebody that sees the corruption in the republic which it is that's what's crazy is that you kind of think well is he starting this thing because truly he sees the corruption? Like maybe he's the right one. Maybe he sees the corruption with, with the Republic and with possibly the, a, a dark, the dark Sith that's in charge of everything. But they didn't, but they did, they didn't do a good job of hiding it. Once he, once you see his red lightsaber, obviously, you know, that at that point he's, he's on the dark side. Right. Because what if he had his original, did he have a blue one? The, like what if, I think it was blue. What if when he ignited his lightsaber, it was actually blue? That because, would be. 
wouldn't that be kind of like, wait a minute, this guy is actually trying to do good, you know? And but you know, at that point, he's 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 on the dark side. Mm-hmm. Um, I. That's the one thing. Like the more and more we learn about Dooku, the more and more we learn about that whole story, and the more and more we hear from Palpatine. I'm like, I don't necessarily think Palpatine is incorrect about the corruption of the Republic. Like, I don't... Like, there are parts of it, especially the way he twists the minds of Dooku. I think Dooku had all good intentions in the beginning. I think he had all good intentions in the beginning of, like, yes, this is corrupt. Yes, this needs to change. And then that turned into a slippery slope. And as you said, when we hear what he was thinking and what he was learning, Mm -hmm. I mean, he wasn't wrong. You're right. Everything he said was right. But then when he had to fight Yaddle in Tales of the Jedi, that I feel like that was the point of no return for Dooku. Because I don't think was it Saber Red at that point or was it blue still? I don't think his saber was red at that moment. That is a good question. Wow, I don't don't think it was red yet. So I don't think he like was a Sith yet. Or Yeah, you're right. He probably didn't become a Sith until after he killed Yaddle. I can't remember. I can't remember. I don't know why. Darth, maybe you know. I don't think it was red. Maybe you know. Uh, If I were to guess, I don't think it was red either. I don't think it was red. Um, Because I think he was still trying to prove himself at that point. Yeah. Sidious. Yeah. Oh, here's the line. Although, like, like, Hayden's acting is great in this. Yeah. No, agreed. No, this 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 part did show me that. Okay, he is going to be a good Darth Vader. Yeah, this like, is when I was like the transition uh, yeah. in Revenge of the Sith. Like I, I was like, he is going to be a good one. Yeah. In Episode Three, because that's when you're going to see the evil come out, truly come out. Mm-hmm. But I do love the fact again. I do love the fact that they reused the set from Episode Four. You know. Yes. Like this is where his that's son. Amazing. Starts his journey. You know, and three PO's in there, and, and R two's in there, and I, I just yeah. I, I love the fact that they tied this area together, and I think we see this area in Obi Wan Kenobi, right? I think so. He says it, it was blue. He said okay. it was blue. It was blue. Yep. See, yeah, like, so that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have to go back to what Padme just said, said there. And that, that, I couldn't remember specifically what bothered me about that whole scene. And it was her saying, to be angry is to be human. Right there, she just pushed Anakin further along in his path to the dark side. If she, like, I know they're not official, mm. but if she is an adult holding another adult accountable, she could say, to be angry is to be human, but you took it too far. Like, she could still be comforting. She yeah. could still be there for him. But don't encourage his action of killing innocent people. Yeah. Like... Well, well, to be angry, yes, is human. But to murder women and children is, is not anger. It's psychotic. Like, that's... <laughs> Like, she encouraged him. She validated what he did. She right, didn't hold right. him accountable. That's what's bothering It wasn't the whole idea of, like, yeah, you can forgive someone. Yeah, I still think that, you know, if your friend does something horrible, you should still be their friend. You should still be there for them because, like, but you hold them accountable. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she didn't yeah, no, hold them accountable. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that, okay, Took took me a while to get there to what I found always wrong with that scene, but that's what it was, and that yeah, I, no, that's, that's not a healthy relationship. She could still yeah. love him. She could still be there for him. She could still comfort him and his moment of weakness, but she needs to hold him accountable for what he did. Mm-hmm. No, I, that's that's a great point. I think that that's. I didn't think about it like that. Um, 
but you're right. Yeah, I mean, he. You don't have to necessarily feel bad anymore once you hear that from, you know, someone like her. You know that you're trying to be involved with and and whatnot. Yeah, that's yeah. that's actually a very good point. Once again, it's okay that she stayed with him. It's okay that she comforted him, but she didn't hold him accountable. Right, right. You know, we passed a shot of. Uh, oh yep. Of of, of Obi Wan or um, of uh, oh day Owen Lars and Baru, and so excited. So f- it was so fun to see them back. Those two actors back in Obi Wan Kenobi. Absolutely. I mean, and, and I Joel also. Joel and uh, Bonnie, I think her name is. Yeah, um, I'm so glad they came back. So, so yes. glad. I, I also love that in Queen's Hope, we actually get a little bit more of what Baru has done with regards to freeing slaves. Yes, that's right. In ta- with ta- on Tatooine. Like, what? Yes. Like, Baru's a way more incredible woman than we realize. She's brilliant <laughs> yeah. and she's awesome. Yes, she is. Yeah, we see it. We see it in Obi Wan too. She's willing to fight and mm-hmm. save her house and her family, and very, very strong woman. And and of course, Joel Egerton, who's just a phenomenal actor. Oh, he's wonderful. He's he was great. so new at this point, you know, but he's done so many good things Mm -hmm. big big time movies you know after this so glad he was part of star wars i keep also forgetting sorry to go into this scene i keep on forgetting how close senator organa is yes to palpatine so how betrayed must he have felt i know right when when one of his closest allies Yep. Well, that was always fun to see in this was to be introduced to Bail Organa because we never really got him in the original trilogy. We never really knew about him. Uh, so betrayed, he started a rebellion. That's right. Yep. But that's the thing, too. And I, and I know we'll probably talk more about it in episode three, but, you know, we have gotten more more stories of Bale also. Now, I will say there were a ton of Bale Organa stories in the expanded universe. They were fantastic stories. Yeah. So, unfortunately, those aren't canon, so we don't have as many now, but we do have some that are part of... One One that I remember that is, not, is, is obviously not canon, but the Forced Unleashed game that came out Uh where where whereas followed this guy you know this this guy this clone named star killer that uh galen merrick that darth vader you know recruited yeah you learn in that game that you had mod mothma and you had bail organa and you had a guy named gar bell of bliss who who is no who hasn't returned to canon yet but Mothma and Bale did, were, and, and they they were starting the rebellion, and they recruited this Star Killer because he turned away from Vader. He got you know came, and that whole storyline there about his background all of a sudden, little Leia was in it. It's like, I love that. Obviously, it's not canon, but I right. love that aspect of Bale and that story. But but you know, again, Jimmy Smiths came in to play Bale. God, we didn't even mention him when we we're talking about cast. It's like oh he's a fantastic gosh. actor, and you know him being Bale and him coming back to do the Obi Wan series and being Bale, him showing up in Rogue One as Bale. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's so cool to see these actors keep playing these parts. Um, and, and he's because he's a very important character. Bale Organa is a very important character in Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, with this so, scene, I, oh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. I was just going to ask Darth. He said, playing it on Wii was so fun. I had the force. I think you're talking about Force Unleashed. Oh, you yeah. played that on Wii? Oh, that's great. I didn't know that it was even on Wii. Yeah. 
I mean, like, with this whole thing, Dar uh, uh, Count Dooku just straight up told Obi-Wan what was happening. I know, right? <laughs> straight up said, Here, here's the plot of the movie, my dude. Here's That's the exactly plot of the next x Many movies. And um, then he's like, come join me and we'll destroy the Sith. And Obi-Wan turns him down. Oh, he's clearly trying to recruit him there. Like, clearly he's trying to recruit him. And it was... Oh, and this uh, Senate meeting is, like, the crux of everyone's argument of why... Uh, Darth Jar Jar. Jar Jar is, like, the, is, is the Lord of the Sith this whole time. Uh, Speaking but, of, did you see... Did you see a shot of Ahmed Best... On social media, did you see that? Which one? He posted a selfie of him in a motion capture outfit again. <gasps> he's like doing something for Star Wars, and I'm like, no. wait a minute. I mean, everybody's like, everybody on there was like, get floored, getting floored. Like, wait a minute, you're wait a minute. But I don't, I don't know if it's, for, it's. I would imagine it's for a game, but. What game is coming out that he would play Jar Jar? Well, I mean, I think maybe that Outlaws game, maybe he you come across Jar Jar in that Outlaws game that's coming out. Oh, my gosh. Or maybe or, the Jedi maybe Fallen come, Order series. Yeah, or maybe you movie, come across him as, him as um, the Jedi who saved Grogu. Yeah, Kel Keller, and, Keller and Beck. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I couldn't remember his name, but But he didn't need motion capture to do that. I know, but I'm saying like maybe you see him in the video game. Oh, oh yes. That's so he that's was true. motion you captioning could... for that character. Yes, that's possible. That is definitely possible. Or maybe it's a completely new character we don't know about. Yeah, I don't know. I mean he's but... a talented actor. Yeah. Dar says, uh, I love every join me scene in Star Wars. All of them are good. Agreed. Yeah. Love My them. favorite is still, no, Luke. I am your father. Yeah. No, yeah. it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get there, too. We're going to commentate on that one. Oh, okay. we will. But I loved, actually, so for this whole upcoming factory line scene i think as a kid i watched some of the behind the scenes of how they made this movie and mm. i thought it was like it blew my mind when george said hey natalie here's a conveyor belt pretend there are things falling uh, and coming yeah. at you and just react as you normally would and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I, I think as a kid, that's when I had mad respect for Natalie Portman. Because I, I thought what she did was so cool. No, you're right. I think, you know, this whole, I mean, a lot of this whole movie, obviously, was on blue, you know, blue and green screen. and Yes. You know, you had to. You had to act like you were doing all. I mean, even uh, even uh, Anakin or Hayden had to swing his lightsaber on this conveyor belt. But I do remember seeing that that shot of that conveyor belt. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find this uh, Ahmed Best shot real fast for you because it's. Oh man, I'm excited. Uh... Yeah, here it is. See. Can you see that? <gasps> see, he's in that motion capture. Oh, uh, that looks like. Okay, so that. I don't know what that's for. But that well, looks it says, so cool. The caption says, Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. And he hashtags mocap, Star Wars, Jar Jar Binks, Activision, Jedi, Sith Lord. Keller and Beck. So it's like, wait a minute. You're wait like minute. tagging all these different things. You can't do that. 
I know. Well, I'm surprised he could. Do, I'm surprised he actually did that. Like, I would think Lucasfilm would be like, wait a minute. You can't be tweeting out or Instagramming out that you're actually doing something again in, in a in a motion yeah. track outfit. You better but, believe all of that goes through so many different people before you post. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, so they let him do it, I think. They obviously let him do it, but I think I think I think they're realizing that with Hayden and with Ahmed, like his, they're like they're like in the fan base again, and people want to see them be doing stuff. You know, they've always been in the fan base. Like they've never been out of the fan base. I just think, unfortunately, the voices of hate sometimes are louder than the voices of love. Like I hate to say it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. here's no. the thing. If you were given nine compliments one day and one negative comment, what what are you going to remember? You're going to remember the negative comment. So, True. unfortunately, yeah. I just think I think that was just an unfortunate like that's just an unfortunate part of all of this is that there were a lot of mm-hmm. people who loved them. But unfortunately, the spotlight went to those that hated them. Yes. Which sucks. It does. Agreed. They didn't deserve it. Not, and I will say, we're starting to see, you know, for the first time, really, we're starting to see Hayden wielding a lightsaber. And, again, the, the, as you've probably seen, too, along with the conveyor belt behind the scenes, but all the behind-the-scenes training that Hayden and Ewan did with lightsabers... Oh, I Man. can't wait until we talk about it for Revenge of the Sith. Yes, I know. Yes. Now, what are your thoughts? You know, I don't know if we talked about this really in episode one, but, you know, here's here's kind of 3PO and, and R2's kind of time to shine in this factory a little bit. You know, what's your, I mean, what's your feeling about kind of the lack of their presence in the prequels though you know they're there they're just not there as much as the original trilogy it's fine because they don't need to play a crucial role you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like i love the fact that they're there because it's cool that you have two characters who've been there all, all since the very beginning yeah and and they still play a crucial role. I mean, R two saves Padme here. Oh, in a, she's in a t- totally. Um, so they do play crucial roles, but they're not in the spotlight. I'm totally fine with that. Um, just like we see yeah, them in too. the sequels. Yeah, yeah. I think the, you know, the um, the original trilogy was kind of. Yeah, well, not kind of. I mean, it was. It was kind of. It was told through the eyes of the droids. Yes. You know, they were always the one kind of observing what was going on. Yeah, you know, they had a lot more, especially three PO. Obviously, had a lot more lines and dialogue, and it was always kind of involved in almost every conversation, and you know, always around. You know, unfortunately, we were seeing the introduction of them in these movies. Obviously, where they came from and how they got yeah. to be in the in the fight, but. Uh, yeah, they, they they definitely took a back seat to these movies, but it's fine. You know, I think it was rightfully so. Yeah, it's totally fine. Dar I'm not says, mad I at it. I love this movie because we get to see R2's rockets. He had removed them in the original saga timeline. Yeah, I guess he did. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have them. Although now, I think if he had the technology, we would have saw them. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I want the story of when Anakin destroyed his lightsaber before. Because he just said, not again. Obi-Wan's going to kill me. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. So, I want to know, when did he lose his lightsaber previously? Yeah. Or get it destroyed? Oh, and another thing, too, I I wanted to mention, I just thought of, like, I don't know if you, you probably didn't know this. But I remember, so back back when these movies were coming out, StarWars.com, the website, had a thing called, had a uh, a fan club. They called it uh, the Hyperspace Club. And you paid like a monthly subscription. And 
you were able to get into a different part of StarWars.com and you were able to see behind the scenes videos of when they were making these movies. Oh, wow. Of course, I paid it. So I saw all this stuff. I was part of the hyperspace, hyperspace club or whatever. And I remember one of the videos that they released prior to this movie coming out was they had a picture of, it was like a, just a picture that it was like a 3d picture that had of Jake Lloyd at the end of episode one in this Jedi outfit, right? At, you know, at the ceremony. Yeah. And he was spinning. And what it did was as he was spinning, he was aging and it showed the progression of him aging into Hayden Christensen. What? Which I was like, wow, that is very clever because, you know, you get to see why, how Jake Lloyd does end up looking like Hayden Christensen when he gets older. Now, again, one thing that I thought was really neat that George did, if, and I'm not sure if you, again, I'm not sure if anybody really knows this either. Obviously, I watched a lot of the interviews with George like this. <laughs> so, but one thing I thought it was very clever of him, because I, I think it's just brilliant, but whenever he whenever he went uh, looking partially for casting for the original trilogy, he looked at um, he looked at Carrie Fisher, right, Leia. He looked at pictures of her parents, and he looked at pictures of Mark Hamill's parents. And he kind of did a blend, and he was like, who do they look like? Oh, like, so he was looking at pictures of Debbie Reynolds? Correct. Debbie Reynolds. And I can't remember her, his father's name. But then you, had, then you took Mark's parents, and I don't know what they look like or their names, but like, he started trying to blend them together a little bit, and... What he concluded was that's Hayden Christensen and Allie Portman. Makes sense. That they resemble those, you know, the qualities of those those people's parents, of the Leia's and Luke's parents. So, I mean, it's like, God, I mean, how, that's how, a, you know, this is how specific he was on details about like that. And that's what, again, that's what makes, I feel like, the realism of Star Wars just stand out, you know, when you're, you go that far. Yes. To find people that look like that. And again, like Jake Lloyd, that transition from Jake Lloyd to Hayden, it's like, okay, that's, re that looks real. Like it looks mm -hmm. like that was him, you know? Uh, I just think that's just beautiful and, and crazy. Absolutely insane. Insane. Oh. We have made it to the arena now. Oh, and I'm sorry. All I can think of, like, reading Rise of the Red Blade, I've got a whole new perspective on this entire scene. And I can't oh, really? talk about it because you haven't read it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. And, and, like, also, this is the relationship, like, this sarcasticness between Obi-Wan and Anakin that I absolutely adore. The what about Padme? Oh, she's on top of things, and she's at the top <laughs> oh, of the pole. <laughs> like, oh, uh, this is just so cool. And this is right here. This is Jedi being Jedi. Yes. You know, like you can't. Don't have a saber, so what do I do? Yeah, it's like Anakin and Obi Wan are just so good. <sighs> now again, I, you want to talk about? I know it's not. Uh, maybe a stretch for some actors but like even the Padme there like when she gets clawed by that beast and she screams like I'm like you feel that like she just got clawed it may like it, how she how she yells like you know because there's so many ways you can do a fake yell but she yelled there like I just got scratched the heck out of my back <laughs> yeah know? I mean and ow. you're like oh I just think she's just phenomenal. I think Natalie Portman is one of the best actresses, period. Oh, yeah. She's phenomenal. And uh, in addition to that, like, you see, I think the really cool thing, too, and something that was done really, really well, is you see Anakin, you see Padme, and you see so much of Leia and Luke in both of them. 
Yes. You're like, yes. oh, that's where Luke gets that from. Oh, that's where Leia gets that from. Like, you just see it. And yep. one of my favorite things is um, there's a series of comics that does, like, if Luke, or sorry, if um, Anakin and Padme stay together and they raise the twins together, mm. one thing I consistently consistently see among the, those what ifs is that Leia is a daddy's girl and Luke is a mama's boy. Oh, really? Co oh. That is the one thing I constantly see. And oh. I think that makes so much sense. Yeah, I, I like, yeah actually, yeah, you're right. That's if you, true. If you sit and you think about it, you're like, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's very true. Like, one of my favorite panels that I've seen is Padme and Luke playing in the sand and Anakin is holding Leia standing back and Leia's like, I don't like sand. <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is funny. Meanwhile, Padme and Luke are making sand castles and everything. You know, we, and we, you know, because of the Clone Wars, actually not, not just the Clone Wars too, but all the way to Rebels, you know, there's a, We've gotten a lot of stuff now after this for Geonosis and the Geonosians and, you know, more about who they are and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, Darth, you're right. Here we go. Indeed. Once again, Rise of the Rebels. I can't start anything. Oh, I can't wait until you read that book. <laughs> it gives a whole different perspective on this and it's insane. Damn, Absolutely I really insane. To, I really need to get into that now. Yeah. Now, this, this is movie, where it, this yeah. is exciting. This is where it's like, wow. Okay. This Shock is the D, movie. Uh, Kit Fisto. Yeah. Like this is the movie when I was like, whoa, I love Mace. Phantom yes. Menace. Oh, I totally. was like, yeah, he's a stick in the mud. This is where I'm like, oh, he's cool. He is really cool. Yeah, he definitely is cool, and I, and I remember, again, I remember those back those behind the scenes thinking, you know, seeing videos of of this being made and stuff, and hearing from him saying how much he just wanted to go out there and be like the best Jedi, and he is. you know there was rumors about this. There was always rumors about this. I remember specifically the rumor about this arena fight between Mace and Jango. Like that was. That was an expectation going into it because, you know, there were some photos that were out there and there were some things that we even talked about that. And I remember being a little underwhelmed with that fight because it wasn't much of a fight. No, it really uh, wasn't. You know, I, I wish we got more of it. Like, I, I wish it was a lot longer. I wish Django held his own a little bit against Mace. But then think about it is Mace is arguably the second most powerful Jedi in the galaxy. <coughs> so, it but sense. it's unfortunate that Django only lost really because he couldn't take off because his jetpack got <coughs> damaged, yeah. you know? But I think it shows the comparison, like that shows the comparison between Mace and Obi-Wan skill wise. Cause Obi-Wan had to go fisticuffs with him and still couldn't beat Django. Meanwhile, Mace didn't need that much time. Right. I mean, like, good gravy. But if Django look, was able... Yeah. That's one of my know. favorite Mace moments, is he doesn't even look, and he just deflects the shot back at the droid. That's right. Sorry, it, it's one of my favorite moments. Definitely. But what I'm saying is that, like, but if Django would have been able to take off like he did against Obi-Wan, I feel like it would have been a much... A much more defined fight you know it absolutely because right now he's and, noticing like okay I, I can take advantage of this so yep yeah and i love this shot right here i love that shot right there of Nate, like right there boom like he gets yep. a saber oh, back and he's yeah. like i'm in it i'm in it i love that uh, shot of sam jackson yep. there but see that now it's all damaged yeah now, oh, now yeah. here's the thing too now here's the thing too i will say in the theatrical release the original 
release. Those sparks right here that are going off. See those sparks right now that are going off yeah. in the back? They weren't in the original cut. Oh. So you didn't know why he couldn't take off. Oh. And it wasn't until one of those, you know, how they, how George is adding stuff all the time. He eventually added those sparks in. Because he wanted to make it clear that it didn't work. That it just didn't happen to malfunction right there when he tried to ignite it. That it was damaged when the, 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 that creature, I think it's a, called a reek. I think that reek, I think the reek when he ran over him. Um, but, but you're right, Darth. Darth says, yep, that just shows how deadly Mace is. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. agree. Yeah, oh man. But I think I, I would just, as a fan, I would have been loved seeing Django flying around, shooting at him. And Mace doing, you know, doing, figuring out how to beat him that way. I think that would have been fun. Yep. That would have but been how really awesome! Cool. But how awesome, again, just an extension of this, how awesome were those Clone Wars episodes where Boba was trying to get back at Mace because yep. of this scene? Oh, oh man. love those. Love those episodes. Oh. Uh. Because I think it was that shot. It was like shot where he he uh, Boba has his mask, his helmet there, and he lures him in that, and then blows the star destroyer up. Like that was awesome. Oh Love my it. god! <laughs> this is why I said this is one of my favorite couple. Is. Oh. R2 and C-3PO. R2. <laughs> Did you say it was one of your I, I said it was one of my favorite because I'm like, it's a bromance. Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, totally. Like, R2-D2 and C-3PO. Now, I will admit, I was a little floored. I was like, when Half this scene Jedi comes up, when they're surrounded, I'm like, wait a minute. What's going to happen here? Yep. There, like, like that moment was like, oh my gosh! But also, it's look how few Jedi are left. I mean, look at that; they got wiped like, out. Once oh, I can't say too much, but once again, rise of the red plate. <laughs> so that takes place during this. It does. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It actually like, starts like, like just a parts of it. This. Yeah. No, a, a huge pivotal moment for your main for the main character happens. During this arena fight. Oh. Oh, is she is she in this fight? She's in this fight. Oh, okay. This cat is. This cat okay. is. Like, I don't know if you saw this, but there was a shot earlier where we see a Padawan because we see the braid. We see a Padawan in the midst of the fight. Mm. And that's so, her? It's not her. She's not She's not seen here. Like you, you'll you'll see when you oh. read the book. Okay. It makes sense. It still makes sense. Yeah. But and then in swoop in the clones with Yoda. Yes. Love it. The turn of the tide. Now what's crazy to think, which I did not again, I did not quite realize this until after I seen the movie and heard about it. But none of these clones in this movie at the end here are practical. No, they're all CGI. They're all CG'd. Which is insane because they look so good. They do. But you would think, like, why... I wonder why he didn't put actors in Clone Wars outfits. You know? Like, Clone Trooper outfits. I have no idea. And, and maybe it was a time factor. Maybe it was a It had to have been more factor. expensive, though. It had to have been more expensive. Who knows? I don't know, but I, I have no I did, idea. I did always wonder that. I mean, that is an interesting question. Oh, I also just realized that they did the majority of the filming in Sydney, Australia. Yeah, like the stuff that wasn't on location was in Sydney, so yeah. it makes sense why Christopher Lee was able to do both that and Lord of the Rings at the same time because That's they were true. both filming. That's true. Well, Lord of the Rings was filming in New Zealand, New Zealand. but. Right there next to Sydney, though. But yeah, it's just right. a hop. It's just a short little plane ride. Yeah, it was funny. It was when it, that was the time when all kinds of movies were being. All the movies were done in Sydney. They had a massive tax incentive down there. Yeah, they and, did. And they uh, they exhausted it. And that's why they got out of there. But 
Yeah. They, almost almost every movie, like 90% of the movies were shot in Sydney like, those two years, during yeah. those years. Droid Mance. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> droid Mance. Droid Mance. Yeah. Droid Mance. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, this is literally the start of the Clone Wars, obviously. This and then is. there's the Death Star. There's the Death Star. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I, of course, I didn't see that the first time I watched it. But after I watched it a few times in the theater, I like, wait a minute. Like, my, my little 12, 11, 12 year old self flipped when I saw it. I was like, <laughs> yeah. ah! like, I was, you know, I totally, freaked absolutely. out. Absolutely. <sighs> Boom. I, I, that, even though it's sad, I like, I love that shot. I know. Because it's one yeah. of those shots where you feel it because the camera shakes when the explosion happens. You know, it, it, it's a it's very war. good cinematography. It's war. It is war. But see, like that. God, that looks That's so good. That's mind-blowing. Yeah. That is CG. How? For, 20, for 2002. You know, this is like 20 years old. Like, it's that's still, really good CG for 2002. I totally agree. Totally agree. Like, that's really good. I mean, all that CG. Look at that. The whole thing is CG. Except Kit Fisto is not right there. But No, no, no. I neither. Yeah, this, the, you know, oh, Clone gosh. Wars. This is what, you know, Obi-Wan mentions in episode four. It's the first time we actually get to see a battle. So I guess, you know, again, it kind of, I guess it's starting to make sense a little bit about attack of the clones you know the clones are attacking yeah like that now, but. yeah um oh darth asked a question do you think it has been enhanced a little since then i mean i don't think so i don't think so i mean obviously as dave m mentioned earlier like a few sparks on the jetpack were added but i don't think no because because the the this was shot i'm pretty sure this was even though it wasn't mainstream at the time you know, this was shot like a film on digital, meaning that he right. wasn't restricted to like H, you know, 1080 or 4K. 4K like, or 6K. I mean, this thing was probably shot at 6K digitally. And yeah. Back then, it was transferred to film for release. But I bet you that they, I mean, he had the quality in, in the image. Like he, they, he yeah. thought this through and made sure he, you know, George is always trying to, push the limits of technology and Which get the is highest fantastic. quality so it is definitely definitely held up unlike most some movies back in the early 2000s yes like even the green screen of like him standing in front of that is like you can't see the lines i mean it's like so nowadays good. you can tell what's cgi and what's not but it still looks really really good really really good it's yes. I hate to say this, but it's better than some some of the more recent Marvel movies and TV shows. I, yeah, I know you mentioned you mentioned that a few times every time you've seen the recent. I know, it's like I hate to say it. Yeah, no, totally agree. It's it's you know, it all comes down to budget and time and attention. And, it does. You know, George George paid it, for this stuff himself, so yeah, of course he's going to make it. I think, if anything, it proves that practicals age well. CGI doesn't necessarily age well. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. CG is always going to keep getting better and better and better. Yep. But practicals will always look realistic. Like, I still look at Lord of the Rings, and I'm like, that looks amazing. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's a practical effect. Oh, right. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely but true. There's a lot of oh. zoom, you know. There's a lot of zooms in this battle. Yeah. I didn't re now that you mentioned. Oh yeah, there's already been like three zoom shots. Now that you mention it, dang! Oh, there's yeah, another. And th <laughs> yeah, and this right here with the clones in the back, like uh, that yeah. shot. That is w cl easily these shot right here. These are easily my favorite. Some of my favorite shots in Star Wars. I think the cinematography in that is with the dust and the blaster bolts. I love those shots. 
It's amazing. I have, I, I have them in the uh, the trailer that I made, the episode two trailer. It's so good. It is. So as we get set for this lightsaber battle, mm-hmm. because at this point, you know this is the this was the fifth Star Wars movie that that came out. You knew, of course, because you've seen it four times already, that every Star Wars movie ends with a lightsaber battle. Yes. So I remember thinking, like, you saw it in the trailer, so I was already excited for it. But the fact we were going to get... Yoda. Well, Yoda was kind of the mystery, right? Because okay. in the trailer, you saw Yoda... Ignite. There was a. I think there was a shot where he ignites his saber, but they never showed how he fought. So I remember okay. reading a lot of concerns in the message boards back then. Like, wait a minute, how is Yoda going to fight with a lightsaber? Because that could, that could have gone very bad. If it was like, you know, if it was very unrealistic or it was cheesy. You know, I mean, him jumping around like like a frog. I mean, it's like, I don't know how much. I mean, there were some fans that were upset by it, but I don't know. But it clearly makes sense, obviously, yeah. the way his size is and, you know, his abilities. But no, I thought this was, I thought this was cool just having, this is what I was like, oh, man, Anakin and Obi-Wan together fighting like this is. This is going to be good. This is going to be real yeah, good. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Now, are you bothered at all? Now, bother is kind of a strong word, but... Like, see, right now, when Dooku here ignites his red saber, right? Yep. Unlike now, where they use sabers that actually have the glow in them so they can get the light... Yes. As you can see now, like there's no light reflection in these movies. Yeah. Oh. That's that's the one thing I actually wish. Now I I know they don't have budget for that. I wish they can go back and put a reflection, like a light reflection on them. But, I didn't even notice that until you said it. Oh really? Now it bugs me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. Sorry. Yeah. No. There's no. There's no glow. There's no. Because. Because in fact, you'll see when, when Anakin starts fighting Dooku, and they 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 chop the pipe. You know that kills the lights. Yeah. So there, you can start. You can see the glow. Is because he switched them out with actual glow sticks. Uh, but if you know, but if you notice, they're just twirling them. They never hit. So, it's it's weird. I, it 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 kind of bothers. It does, you know. I, I can get over it, obviously, but it does make it a little unrealistic. You know? Yeah, of course. But like, unlike now, where you know, when when Ray and Kylo Ren are fighting, like you can see the reflection of the light in their eyes and in their face. No, here's. Here's an interesting thing. In um, Rise of the Red, B- Red Blade, um, apparently, two lightsaber dueling is a thing. Right here, look, Left- look, look. Oh. They're holding these lights and they're not reflecting. Like, they're not reflecting. It's like, right knew. there they are. So look, right there they are because they're just twirling. But when they fight, it's not reflecting. Like, right? I never noticed that before. <laughs> See right there, it's not reflecting right there. Oh man! Now look, now look how exhausted Dooku is right here. The shot right here, yeah. right there. He's like, like he's yay, like, yay. oh my! I mean, he, I mean, he just used every bit of energy to fight those two. And not gonna lie, there's a little bit of fear in his eyes when he says yeah. he's coming around the corner. He's like, yeah. oh no. So what were you saying about Red Red Blade? Um, so actually, 
fighting with two lightsabers requires a specific training with a specific master. Oh, really? Okay. Do they they say what master? Um, they do. I don't remember. It's more of a throwaway line. I, I won't say the context of which it's brought up, but it's brought up for like a brief moment where another mm. Jedi master is talking to this guy. She's like, well, if you want to do dual training, you'll have, we can see if master blah, blah, blah can help you with this. And she's like, no, mm. no, I don't know about that, but I, I won't go into the context of it, but. Yeah. Darth, uh, let see, he says, I really want to see more clones in later years. We have gotten little, but want much more. No, I agree. I think, I think that would be cool. I think, you know, the thing about it is, is they are pretty much, I think we've come to the conclusion that the clones are basically aging twice as fast as they, yes. you know, they're not, they're not doing like three or four times as fast. So, you know, there's. I think there was like at the beginning of this when we get into seeing him at Camino. You know, like Daniel Logan, where he is getting trained. Like when he's the clone version and he's getting trained. Yeah. It's been about. He's about ten years old, and it's been only about five years. So they're about. They're moving at double. So meaning that, the first batch of clones that were, that were created around Episode One. They're about 20 years old or whatever when the Clone Wars start. Yes. So if you think about that, if you go 19 years later, or actually 20, 22 years later from here to episode four, I mean, that means these clones are, you know, that's, I mean, that, cause that's 30 years. So they're, you know, they're pushing 60s when we get to the original trilogy. You know, if we go to Mandalorian, where we think maybe we might get see a Rex, a Captain Rex at some point. Yep. I mean, that's about, that's five, it's about nine years later, so that's 40, so they're about 80 then at that point. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to see them much more after that, you know, I guess. It just depends. But, but the New Republic part where we're at with the Mandalorian and stuff like that, they would, it's still possible I think you could see clones for sure. Yeah. Also, I do want to say that um, when Yoda started fighting, I may or may not have squealed as a little kid because I was so oh, excited wow. to see Yoda fight. Yes. I was too. I was too. Uh, and it's just it just shows you that by doing what he's doing there, you know, he's still pretty powerful i mean he's mm-hmm. i almost he's wonder if he still. chooses to walk with a cane to help him conserve more energy for the force yeah also you have to admit that is one of the benefits of a lightsaber is that it cauterizes the wound immediately totally oh it saves your life basically it does yeah. <laughs> yes you know and, and just kind of going back to that anakin padme relationship there at the end yeah I mean, you're not really hiding much when you're running in there and throwing your arms around Anakin. You're really not. <laughs> and the fact that he wanted to leap out of the plane, uh, out of the plane, it's not a plane, but the plane. The gunship. To go after yeah, her. Gunship. And Obi-Wan's like, you're going to be expelled from the order. He's like, I can't leave her. I don't <laughs> care. Yeah. And Obi-Wan's like, take a moment and think. What would she do in your shoes? She do her duty. Yeah. This is where Yaddle was killed. That's where Yaddle was killed. I know. It's crazy to think that now, right? Nuts. Yeah, right there. I mean. Like, literally. literally. Right there. The only time we see Darth Sidious in this. In this movie. Yeah. The one time. Ten years later after uh, episode one. And we find out, obviously, he's Lord Tyrannus right there. So, like, that's actually a... Vi- if we think about it, that's a... No, it, it, that's ten years for Dooku to get his red blade. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. ten years. Never mind. Ten years. I was about to say... Yeah, so at some point... Well, yeah, you gotta think that he... he 
he turned pretty much right after Maul died. Like he recruited him, right, and got him the yeah to do that. Now, this line at the beginning of, like, Sidious controlling the Senate, I think that's the first seed that actually... Because one thing I used to think in Revenge of the Sith was it's very weird that they make that leap so fast, and it's so they're so quick to believe that Palpatine is Sidious, or Palpatine is a Sith Lord. But that line in the big, like right here, that they just said, do you think Dooku was telling the truth when he said the Republic was being controlled by the Sith? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't know. They don't know because yeah, like, they don't, saying that, yeah, they're like, I don't know if this is what he's saying is true. Blah blah blah. But that line helps in the third movie whenever Anakin helps connect the dots, make them go, oh whoa, Dooku was yes. right. True. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Which kind of, which kind of, you know, in, in in hindsight, I mean, it it's kind of a wonder. Like, okay, wait a minute, they, no one put this together. Yeah, no one put th- that Palpatine is like he's in power long before he he's the one enticing this war to happen. We're dying because it's like somebody's got to be. I mean, they they do kind of in the end start thinking about it because they want to spy on him a little bit. Yeah. But it took a while and they still didn't sense it. I mean, that's how powerful Palpatine was, right? To hide, shroud the dark side over the the light and cloud their judgment. Mm-hmm. Um Dara says favorite line of the movie. Which which one was which that? Which one was that? Oh. Favorite line. I also love in the books we get the true meaning behind Padme's wedding dress. Yes. I do like, too. oh, it it made me tear up. It's but, so well, sweet. Oh, Yoda's begun the Clone Wars has. Yep. That's yep. Right. No, uh but if you, but I love I love these first two movies, episode one, episode two, because George is also George's again, George's cadence by making these movies, the rhythms the, the the harmonies and all that stuff you talk about. Do you remember episode one ended with a celebration, just like episode four? Mm-hmm. This one, you've got two husband and wife with the two droids. Empire Strikes Back. How's that end? With Luke and Leia and the two droids. Phenomenal. <sighs> Love it. Well. Man, that went by quick. Yeah. I feel that like. did go by quick. Yes. So there you go. The episode two commentary for Attack of the Clones. And Darth hung out with us the whole time, man. Awesome. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, I guess we. I guess uh, I didn't let uh, Thrawn know soon enough because he would have probably uh he yeah. probably would have got got up early and did this but uh, he might not have seen yeah. my patreon post but in time yeah it was friday it's now saturday technically oh it is saturday now <laughs> yeah, yeah it is saturday friday night. Night. what time what time zone are you on darth are yeah, you on the east coast yeah. time i can't remember let us know. Um, he's easy to hang out at this time. Central. Oh, central, central time. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's, sure it's just now, mi- just now past midnight on you. Yeah. Yeah. For us, it's one thirty a.m. <laughs> one thirty. Yeah. It's still early for me. I, I don't really go to bed till about now anyway. So. <laughs> uh, but Hannah, thank you. I know you've had a long week. <sighs> thank you, Dave. This was a good way to end the week. Yeah. Now you can now you can sleep in. Are you sleep, you sleeping in tomorrow? I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. we we have off tomorrow, but next next week it's just going to be so many yeah. days in a row. So many. That's days why in we, a row. that's why we had to get this one done. Yeah, we had to yep. get this one done because I know you you've got a lot going on. We've got a lot going on. There's so much, um, but glad we can make it work. Yes. So. This is out now. As everybody, if everyone, when everybody's watching this, this is out now. We've got 
our episode one commentary that we've done, depending on when you watch this, go to our other our other uh, playlist on YouTube and check out the other commentaries. There are a batch of commentaries on there that we did a few years ago, back in 2017, when we were doing kind of our journey to episode eight. We were doing all the movies. Then uh, we yeah, had some Casey guests. Were. Yeah, me and Casey were. We had some guests for each movie. Uh, we may do that. We may bring somebody on. Uh, I know Martin Cyberren kind of raised his hand. I was like, "Hey, I, if you can, if you want me on, I'll do it." That's awesome. Yeah, uh, but I definitely wanted to obviously get you involved in this because we haven't done commentaries yet. So yeah. maybe we should get our coworker Sarah on for the Last Jedi because she absolutely loves that movie. Really? Okay. Oh, she lo- She and I have gotten into fights. Over really? the last Jedi I... versus the Riders of Skywalker, we have gotten into fights over it. I love, I love Sarah. We went to school together, but she and I have does gotten. She into lo- does she fight- love both movies? No, she does not like Rise of Skywalker, and she loves the Last Jedi. Loves the Last Jedi. What about the Force Awakens? I don't know her opinion on that, huh. <laughs> but she prefers the Last Jedi over the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I mean, I can. I can wait because I know that that means it's going to be like the end of the year when we do those. Yeah. But I have not done, we did a commentary for the rise or for the end of, or the, um, we did a commentary for the last Jedi, but I think I mentioned on here, like the mic, one of the mics was, didn't record well. So I'd never put it out there. So I don't really remember it, but I'm curious about doing that again with you. And then, I've not done a run for Rise of Skywalker, so mm. um, it's going to be interesting to finish those two out because those will be yeah. the last two we do. It later will this be. Year. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. to rewatch these again. You know, I, like I said, I had it on, had it on today in the background of work, but it was just on the, kind of in the background. It was just checking out a little bit there but yeah it's the way like i listen to youtube videos or podcasts that i've heard slash seen over and over and over as white noise to help me focus on work right 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 okay so episode two i mean um did we talk i can't remember at the end of episode one did we talk anything about like we didn't rate it or anything like that did we I don't think we did. I think, I think we did. what we should do, though, at the end of our journey is then, like, because then we've seen all of these in order. I yes, think at yes. that point, so after The Rise of Skywalker, we should rate all the movies that we saw. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. I wonder if my, yeah, because I have, we should mention, I guess, do you have your list of, your movie, like your movies. So before we do, so we'll remember that going into Revenge of the Sith, we probably need to remind everybody, like going into these commentaries, this was our or, list of or, movies and see if or, it changes after the commentaries. Or should we save it to the end? So it's like, okay, this is what it is. All right, now let's revisit the list. So it doesn't influence our choice. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? You mean at the end? Like at the end, what, end, what it was and then what it is now. Yeah, so at the end of Rise of Skywalker, we're like, okay, how do you rate these? Okay, okay now sure. we're gonna look at the lists that we haven't seen in a while. This is what it was. Well, you need to have you need to make sure you have that list. Yeah, I gotta find it. I'm sure I yeah. sent it to you at some point. I know I've said right. it in the podcast at some point. Maybe yeah, we just it. have to revisit it somehow. <laughs> yeah, so we can do that. But that is it. The credits are finishing up right now. Um, yeah, so episode two, commentary. Episode three, commentary will be coming out in about a month unless you're just watching this much later. Go check out mm-hmm. our YouTube channel to see if the um, the commentaries for these are out yet. But all through 2024, we're going to be doing commentaries of all the Star Wars movies. All right, so he's had a blast. Thanks, y'all. Can't wait for the next one. My fave of the three. Oh, mm-hmm. the next one, Revenge of the yeah. Sith. Yes. Oh, by far. Revenge of, the Sith of the three? Definitely. Of the three. Absolutely. Can't wait. Yeah, we could talk about that. Look for us doing that, Darth, at the end of, uh, towards the end of March. 
um, or early April, depending on Hannah's schedule. Hannah's schedule is going to be pretty busy at the end of March, so we'll see yeah. what we can do. Um, but yeah, right. this was fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Star. Thanks, Hannah. For Thank you, out. Dave. And Allie, wherever she's at. Yeah, uh, she's over here playing with her turtle. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. Hope everybody enjoyed that. Let us know what you think about episode two, and we will be uh, back soon. Go check us out each week, of course, on Inside the Force. Go check out our other store uh, or other shows council sessions beyond the saga masters of the order dark knowledge all kinds of stuff and then of course we're all over the podcasts feeds every week on inside the force and of course thanks to our patrons as always for your support especially darth being one of our master patrons we appreciate it mm -hmm. take care everybody thank you so much hannah thank you so much dave yeah, we'll see everybody at some point. Take care. May the force be with you.